opportunity to add to Great Britain's significant tally already. He is Jamaica's first ever diver to make it to the Olympics. Please welcome from Jamaica, Yona Knight Wisdom. So would you say that when when you were 15 you dropped out of school? Mm. I wouldn't say dropped out of school actually, I'd say... Left, or just finished. Changed direction. Yeah, finished <laughs> Was that the time that you decided that gymnastics was the sport for you or had you decided that before? Oh no, well I'd, 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 I started when I was four. Yeah. And very quickly went from, like very quickly went to pretty much doing 20 hours a week young. So mm -hmm. I went to school all day and then gymnastics five till nine every night, Monday to Friday. Yeah. So um, I, I knew, and, and sac already sacrificed a lot from the young age, you know, stop playing football, yeah. stop doing other sports, um, you know, didn't go, you know, it was, I knew it was gymnastics mm -hmm. and, and kind of when I got to 15, 16, I kind of, I made the, the switch of, oh, actually, like, I can, I think I can, I believe I can do this. Mm. To, might to, make, to, make yeah, some, I can make something out of, out of this. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and I think it's an interesting, another interesting one is, is kind of, because I feel like a lot of individuals, particularly parents, when getting their kids into the sport, they believe or they're doing it because they want them to become an Olympian, like mm -hmm. me, me and yourself, or the best or the professional when it's it's you know if you, if you think about hard fact the amount of kids that do gymnastics the amount of kids that do diving yeah the reality is you're not going to go to the olympics so yeah. that wasn't the reason i was doing gymnastics i was doing it for the relationships for the self-discipline that i built for the love of the sport like the love of gymnastics saying yeah. you were diving it wasn't because I went every day and was thinking about the Olympics. You know, the, the real the real time when I thought about the Olympics was literally maximum two years out. When mm -hmm. I turned eighteen, I stepped up to senior. <coughs> did the, we did I did the Commonwealth Games, mm. which was like wow, I've experienced yeah. this sort we'll of event. Later, yeah. I then had the belief, like eighteen years old, not when I was four, or five, yeah. or six. I had the dream, of course. Like every yeah. kid, I want to do that. I watch it on telly. I want to be able to do that, but. That realistic belief. It's like a, 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 a yeah, really so like, small difference yeah, yeah. between the dream and the actual real belief. The, the reality. Yeah. And then when I was eighteen, when I did the Commonwealth Games, and because there's so many factors that play out, because, particularly in gymnastics, at the same time, and just making the team mm -hmm. is a is a tough like transitioning from a junior to a senior and getting in. So, yeah. for example, you know, people watching this sport know that the from London Olympics to Rio Olympics, two spots changed, two gymnasts changed. That's it. So the, the London <coughs> was, you know, Christian, Dan, Lewis, Max, Sam Oldham, mm -hmm. and um, the three, Max, Christian, Lewis, Yeah. and then there was me and Bryn. So like two, like, so the reality is, you can think about the thousands of kids and That's thousands of athletes yeah. that are trying, wanting to get there. Then the, the top squad, the best in the country. There's probably twenty of us on there. Yeah. <laughs> only you know only two spots. So what's the what's the reality? The sixteen year old watching London. Yeah. Actually it's thinking like, that you could be yeah, one of those. Just, yeah. It's a big. It was a big thing, but oh. you know who did it. So yeah, I want to. I do want to leave that point though about the doing it because you enjoy it. Yeah. And focusing on like what's like what's the the real reason yeah. because if I just said that they're hard facts you know two spots changed there's thousands of kids doing diving mm -hmm. gymnastics football tennis mm -hmm. it, it don't really want to be your why like one don't want to be a reason and I'll talk about it more but I've always focused m so much more on the process and being better and growing mm -hmm. than the medals or the money or the, the result you know the result yeah um, but yeah yeah, 
I mean, I had the same dream when I was a kid, obviously. I wanted, as, as soon as I started diving, I wanted to make it to the Olympics. Yeah. I never thought about it when I was a gymnast at all, but as soon as I started diving, that's when it really kicked in. And that quickly became my norm, like almost as normal as going to school. Mm. It was to go to the pool. Um, yeah, exactly, but but like say when you learn in the first your first double or your first triple, like yeah. you weren't thinking about Olympics, you were just thinking oh, about yeah. becoming a better yeah. diver and yeah. just loving what you're doing. Just so and you just making friends. It. Exactly, you consumed um, in that. I got to go to like a few different competitions around the country, then eventually like in Europe and then further afield. And yeah, all, it, it just became it was just so much fun. Yeah. It was all so much fun. And you know, I'd joke with my friends at school about the potential of actually making it to, uh, making it to the Olympics. Um and And it was in 2012 where it kind of became a realistic thing when I decided to represent Jamaica. And that switch changed so much because it gave me a tremendous amount of freedom. Yeah. Because it allowed me to make mistakes without fearing being dropped from the team. So in 2012, I mean, I don't know how much you know about kind of my story, but I um, obviously decided to switch found my sponsorship and like sat down and drew out a plan with Edwin, my coach. And 2016 was the goal and I would qualify at the World Cup that year. And that was how I was going to get there. And we are going to, you know, do everything that we need to do to get ourselves in the right position. And then it ultimately come out of World Cup with absolutely no regrets. So I've done everything mm -hmm. that I can. And I got 17th to qualify. I needed, um, 80, um, needed to be in the top 18. I got 17th mm -hmm. to qualify. And um, it was, it's a little bit different um, from what you said that you only kind of realistically believed it two years out. Yeah, cause I had you, a much longer process of actually like kind of working towards that goal. Yeah, because I guess it was like your team selection dynamic is, is removed because yeah. you're the only Jamaican diver. Mm -hmm. um, and you kind of just need a, a result. Yeah, my selection like, problem yeah. was competing yeah. against the entire world yeah, and having to get my spot. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you think though, do you think it's it's hard? Well, it's hard to answer this question, but having then that switch of knowing that you can, you're the only one, mm. do you think that affected your diving ability? Like, we, I guess, do you know what I mean? It, it, was it more of a relaxed approach, or do you think you still put in like the same work and commitment and sacrifice? That's, it, I think it's, that's the, it's, it's a tough question answering it because like no I actually think it's a really easy question to answer to be honest right. because I think that if I hadn't been representing Jamaica I don't think I'd still be diving now oh right okay um, so that, that that give you the belief well, not the, the decision to carry on um, yeah I mean I wouldn't have dropped it there and then yeah but I think due to the competition in England the frustration of um, probably dropping out and not improving as much as I, as I have done, that would have, you know, made me think about something else. Think like the, but but you still trained, I suppose you still trained with the guys like Jack yeah. and Chris, and did, yeah. they, did you still measure yourself again? Did you still push yourselves and... Oh yeah, 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 yeah competing yeah. against each other as, like, yeah, every single day in training. Yourself, and that's, that's yeah, I would have it. still done that. I would have still done that. And I might have had some success with Great Britain. I just, I don't know if I would have um, improved at the rate I did. And the reason... I say that is because all the competitions that I got to do representing Jamaica that I wouldn't have done as, as a British, British diver, like probably like Commonwealth Games in 2014 and all the world championships I went to just because I wouldn't have had the opportunity because I wasn't the best or the yeah, second yeah, best yeah. diver in Great Britain at that time. Yeah. The reality was because I had all that experience and I improved to the level I got to in 2016, I was probably the second or third best diver in the country. I just wasn't representing the country, yeah. which is really, really interesting. But that was due to the experience that I had gained over the years of knowing how to manage myself in which competition. Which you wouldn't have. Which I might not have got without, yeah. exactly. Um, so it, it's a really interesting thought. I always have that thought of like where I would be now if I was still representing Great Britain. Like would I still yeah. be in the position I am now? But I honestly don't think I would be. But um, you know, you never, you never no, know. No. You never know. Um, but like before, what, what, when was the first time you represented Great Britain? Uh, I was 12. Okay, like junior level. In, yeah, in the national competition. Mm -hmm. um, and then, 
I don't know. What's interesting is I was I was never the I was never the best. Like okay. the wonder boy, the wonder kid. There was there was a lot ahead of me, and I think that like I've always quite liked being the bit of the underdog. Yeah. Um, particularly as a junior, and then I just kept because even in terms of talent and and just that natural, you know, you seek it, and this kid, the boundaries have been pushed all the time. Mm-hmm. Back then, I was kind of just just hidden away. If that makes sense, do you know what I mean? Just yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Um, and then just just work my way through the junior ranks like slowly, and and when it mattered, got the results in. When it like when it was 16, 17, 18, I really really stepped up. Then junior European championships when I was eighteen. So what's going to happen in the next two weeks? Oh, okay. Um, I won that. Won five club medals. So that was huge. Which then put me in the Commonwealth team <coughs> yeah. for Glasgow. Then I went to Glasgow and won four medals, mm-hmm. which was again, oh my god, this kid, like, yeah. he's 18, he's, he just swallowed the pressure, like, boom, just could do it. Then that same year, which wasn't the plan, I got told, literally had a conversation with the head coach after the Commonwealth, it's like, right now, uh, no, sorry, after the Europeans, we said, right, we're going to put you in the Commonwealth team, the story of the junior stepping up, the junior European champ. Yeah. Um, for that, you know, for win, for that reason, for winning the junior Europeans, and then we're going to take to the world championships as a reserve, just to get the experience and, and you know things. So anyway, I killed it at Commonwealth, and then obviously, unfortunately, Sam like did his ankle in on the vault, which was like a team oh, yeah, spot that would 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 have usually been going to the worlds, out, and because I killed it, it was like right, you're going to be in. So oh my gosh, what amazing. Um, I had to put. I remember I had to pull out. I had to not go. I, was, I had a lad's holiday plan to Cavos, oh, really? and I wasn't allowed to go because I was going to do the world championship. So you imagine how devastated I was. <laughs> Eighteen years old, just like killed it at Commonwealth. <laughs> um, but then I went to the world and then yeah. did incredible there. Made a fight, made a bar final, and came fourth, which was like the first ever historic. Oh really? Um, so yeah, that, that was kind of my year that put Nile on the map in terms of the gymnastics world, and that's what it's about. It'd be, it'd be similar in diving; you kind of have to make a name for yourself yeah. within the the community and the judges and the Absolutely. the athletes. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. like, and because it's subjective, and people are judging your gymnastics. When you have a name, when you have mm-hmm. a results behind you, the moment you step on the podium and present to a judge, yeah, it's like it's Nile. Yeah, like this is gonna be this is gonna be a good routine or. Mm. We know he's good at this, we know he's good at that, so that's the challenge in itself, just make it a name for yourself in the spot. That being said, after you first put your name on the map, and you know you have that expectation, like, you present and the judge will see and you say, that's now, this yeah. should be good. How, what's the pressure like? Like, do you, do you feel that pressure now to maintain that level of performance because of the name you've made for yourself? Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a massive level of expectation, but I... Um, I proper love it. Yeah. Like, I, I, I seriously, I have no, like, no anxiety or doubt at it, you know, like, with the whole, I'm now, like, the top, like, one of the top dogs, probably the best all-rounder in Britain, mm-hmm. had biggest success, well, not the biggest success in, but, you know, off the back of the Commonwealth and world medal, European titles, Olympic medal, and um, mm-hmm. I genuinely just step up and really like take it in and, and thrive off it rather yeah. than sink in. And I, and, I, and I guess I've always said that the pressure that you feel is what you put on yourself. Mm-hmm. So we, we, when you say that out loud, I never ever think about, I never really think about that, and no. particularly when I'm performing. Yeah. When I'm stood underneath a steel, like the high bar. Yeah, you just know what you got. I'm not, yeah, I'm just focused on doing a great routine and um, being very, very consistent over the years of performing when, when I need to. Mm-hmm. And that's really important as an athlete, and in, in particularly in gymnastics. Yeah. But I've just not. It's. Do you know what it is? It's often when we, when we sit here. So like after the events, some like the Commonwealth or the Olympics, like a month later, yeah. I'll be sat there and just think, "How oh, the hell did I do?" That? <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, exactly. it's the world, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. but when you're in it, you're just doing your thing. Yeah. You're just going through yeah, the process, yeah. and you're just focused on your gym or your diving, mm-hmm. like. And um, I do. I I am good with. The mindset stuff that I have had psychology help throughout, yeah. throughout the years. Yeah. And um, I think the biggest 
the biggest thing from from my perspective is just your inner talk yourself like how you are with yourself in, the, in an environment like that yeah. and I'm very like optimistic positive thrive in it enjoy it smile like feed feed the energy feed off the pressure yeah um, it's easy to go in an event like that to that size and be like oh my god what if mm -hmm. intimidated you know like don't mess up you know yeah. don't the dots the negative don't the, you know whereas uh, when I'm in my little zone like I'm so good I'm just like I'm gonna smash this I can do this yeah. even the, the mistakes happen of course. all the time but then even then I'm like it's fine move on it's happened yeah you know that was a shame how can I learn for next time um, but that self-talk that positive that positivity and just like I can do this I'm gonna smash it I'm confident you know, I'm gonna enjoy this. I'm gonna smile my way through it. That's really like the key bit for me. I think. Yeah, that's something I've slightly struggled in the last couple of years. I think the um, like managing of expectation and um, pressure. Yeah. And as you say, it's pressure that you put on yourself, mm -hmm. and all the pressure that I've felt over the years, it's all come from myself and my own expectations. Yeah. Like who's who sat you down and said, you know, you must do this, and this is because of this, and because of that, like. Probably no one. It, there, I, can, I can tell yeah. you there ain't no one. No one, no one. It's, it's just in there, mate. It's it's in really there. is my brain. And you know, I, I, I haven't had the same psychology help. Like I'm hopefully getting some of this here from these Beckett, which is gonna be really, really useful. Yeah. Um, going to the next cycle, uh, or the next year. Yeah, um, doing this will really help because you yeah. hear their stories and how they deal with certain Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. And like, it's I'm, I'm learning about you. Like, with, like I'm learning you for uh, properly for like four or five years yeah. now. But hearing that from you, like I've learned so much about you and the way you kind of approach yeah. things, and I can you know use all that to help me, which is really great. Um, I guess like but I, do, do you seen obviously you seen Bolt's documentary, like yeah, that Bolt, yeah, yeah. It's when he says, mate, it, it, it's like the, like Bolt is the is the freaking the man, like yeah. The you know and, and the results he get. You imagine the when you're talking about expectation, you imagine the expectation on him. <laughs> but it's when he just says. Like he just kind of shrugs his shoulders and goes, you can't, you can't take it too seriously. Mm -hmm. It's like when you when you were twelve and you went to do diving to learn. It, it was like I'm doing this because it's yeah. fun. So like to be able to have that mindset mm -hmm. like Bolt does yeah. in the third Olympics to win the next three gold to just be like, ah, it's just another day. Yeah, it that, that's like incredible. that's yeah. freaking yeah. special. That it's incredible. It's gold dust, and I feel like I've I've got a, I've got it to a level. To, yeah. to a certain level. Well, from what I see, like just, you, you've you've got the the bravado of it, like a little swagger as well. I remember coming to watch you in Gold Coast, <laughs> and, like, little, like, swagger walking around, and then like you're like when when you landed after your um you after your high bar routine, like that roar was unbelievable from you. It's a, the, the yeah, just see, you pure expression and that is phenomenal. And that is why that that is why I do it. Mm -hmm. Like it's common the Gold Coast three gold, two silver. Actually, don't. The, the medals of zero that don't give me anything yeah obviously it's, it's great it's you want great success to see, yeah. and like, that's what you do it for mm -hmm. but they're at home like on the so like, so they're sat there like nothing today's happiness the way I feel now nothing yeah and and what I do it for is that moment like you just mm -hmm. explained when I, when I landed this mount yeah that's what the, fe the feeling the way it makes yeah. you feel and like, least. and you never forget that and to be honest, that's what gets me to the gym every day. Mm -hmm. And then the, just, I want that again. I want to go in, well, I'm obviously pulled out of Europeans, unfortunately, but I want to go to Worlds in, in two months and just have that feeling again. Yeah. And then and the, I think the medals and success, they'll, they'll come with that. Absolutely, like, yeah. Where we're clear that, our, that we've got ourselves to a certain level of ability in our sports mm -hmm. that's good enough. It's just, it's just I'm, I'm searching that. I'm, yeah, I'm searching that that perfect execution and the feeling that I get when uh -huh. I perform the best I can yeah. do. Yeah, and then that feeling, just the pure release, and just just that it's just the just most it's undescribable the feeling. Yeah, yeah, it gives me. I've got goosebumps now. Just thinking yeah. back to when I when I do it. So. Yeah, I mean, whilst you've been talking about, I've been thinking about like the, the, the times where I've <laughs> the done moments the where you've yeah you've just and killed it. And it's it just like, makes oh me smile outside. It's phenomenal. But it doesn't. It, you know, whether you win gold or come six. Yeah. The feeling's the same, and that's what that's what I search for. Yeah, I agree with that.